friends, my name is Lauren Clowers and I teach second grade at Pleasant Ridge Elementary School. Today, this is your second grade science activity one for the summer. The handout that goes along with this video can be found under the student resources tab at the Knox County Schools website. If for some reason you're having a hard time understanding me in this video, there are a couple of things you can do to help. Turn on your closed captions if available. Adjust the playback speed to slow the video down. Consider watching short clips, then pause the video. Listen and watch again. And lastly, ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently to talk to your partner about what you've heard and what you understand. So what are we gonna be learning about today, friends? Today, we're going to be learning about how pushes and pulls move an object. Have you ever thought about how objects move or why they move? Well, today we're going to discuss how objects move. Watch a quick video with me. As you're watching this video, I want you to ask yourself, how is that boat moving? What kind of boat is this, friends? You're right, it's a sailboat, which means there's no motor to move this boat. So what is moving this boat? If you said wind, you're absolutely correct. The wind is pushing against the sail to move the boat forward. What about the water? Was the water helping to move that boat? Hmm, it's a little tricky, isn't it? Absolutely, the water was helping to move that boat, and it was actually applying both pushes and pulls. The waves were pushing and pulling the boat to help it move. So today, we're going to investigate some different pushes and pulls in our everyday world. A push or a pull is simply a force. To move an object, you must apply a force. So Look at a couple of these pictures. How are these objects moving? Well, the little boy is pushing his brother in the toy car using his arm. The bicyclist is pushing his foot against the pedal to move his bike forward. So a push is moving the object away from the push. Hop over to the other side of the screen. Do you see the gentleman? pulling his self closer to the bar. He's using his arms or the team at the bottom of the screen pulling the rope closer to their body. A pull moves an object towards the pull. So let's take a closer look. Let's look at these pushes. How many of you like to run? I love to run. It's all I do in my free time. But how is a runner pushing? What part of her body is she using to push? Those are some great questions. A runner is using her foot or feet to push off of the ground. So she's pushing the ground away. How about the light switch? What do you use to flip a light switch up and down? You're right, you use your finger. So as you take your finger to push the light switch up, you're pushing it away from your finger. And look at the lady with her shovel. How is she applying force to that shovel? She's using her foot to push the shovel away down into the ground. So the key takeaway with a push is you're moving the object away. Let's look at some pulls. A pull does the exact opposite as a push. A pull brings the object towards the pull. So think about that for a second. When you reach and you grab a door, you're bringing that door closer to your body. Or when you're pulling a sled or a wagon or maybe a toy train, you're moving that object closer to your body. 
There are some pulls that aren't as easy to see, like when you grab your backpack off the floor and you pull it up onto your shoulder, or when you lift or pull a heavy bag up off of the ground. Those are pulls as well. A pull brings the object closer to the body. So let's hop up out of our seats for a second. We're going to do some pushes and pulls with our bodies. Are you ready? Hey guys. All right, so let's practice some everyday pushes and pulls. I want you to imagine that you have a hammer in one hand and a board and nail in the other hand. So I want you to pay close attention to what happens as I take this hammer and strike the nail. Watch what's happening there. Friends, what do you notice is happening? Yes, we're using this hammer to push the nail into the board. So friends, watch what happens after I hit the nail and I jerk my hammer away from the board. I'm pulling. So when you hammer, you push and pull. Can you do that with me? Push the nail into the board. Pull your hammer back. Push the nail into the board and pull your hammer back. Fantastic. People who are in construction or people who like to build objects use force every day by pushing and pulling a hammer or maybe pushing and pulling wheelbarrows. So friends, let's think about another way that we use force in our everyday world. How many of you guys like to take dirt? Or maybe go to the beach and build sand castles? I absolutely do. So Ms. Flowers, I want you to think, when you're digging in the dirt, a lot of times we use, you got it, shovels. I want you to think about how we use that shovel. We plant the shovel onto the ground. We lift our foot and push the shovel into the ground. We use our arms to lift the dirt and then toss it, right? Grab your imaginary shovel. Do it with me. Plant your shovel on the ground. Lift your foot. Now push the shovel onto the ground. I want you to use your arms to lift or pull the shovel away from the ground. And now dump your dirt. Let's do it one more time. Take your imaginary shovel, lift your foot, and push the shovel into the ground. Pull the shovel away from the ground and toss your dirt. Do you see how we apply force to the shovel? We push the shovel and we hold the shovel. So friends, in your everyday world, you're using forces to move objects all the time. One thing to keep in mind is that when you push an object, you're moving that object away. And when you pull an object, you're bringing that object closer. Do you have time for one more activity? Fantastic. I'm going to pull my hair back for this next activity. My friends, I want you to just jog in place. Can you do that? As you're jogging in place, keep going, don't stop. As you're jogging in place, I want you to ask yourself, what part of your body are you applying force to? Yes, yes, you're lifting or pulling those legs every time you run, walk, or jog. So, in your everyday world, you're applying force to objects all the time. Are you ready to go on a search for your own objects that you apply force to? Fantastic. Get ready to pull out that task sheet. I can't wait to see the objects you find. All right, friends. Thank you so much for getting up and moving with me. Now that you have your task sheet, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a walk around your home or outside of your home. I want you to look for or find two objects that you can apply the force of a push and a pull to. Once you've located your objects, I want you to take the object that you can push 
and draw it or write the name of the object right here in this column. And then beside it, I want you to explain how the force is moving the object. I've given you an example. The little boy is pushing his brother. So that was my explanation. The little boy is pushing the little car. On the backhand side of your handout, you'll find the chart for you to write or draw the object that you can pull into the column. Beside it, I want you to explain to me how the force is moving the object. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Our key takeaways are that a push moves the object away from the push, and a pull moves the object towards the pull. Keep that in mind as you're searching for your objects. Don't forget to clean up your mess and wash your hands. Put your objects back where they belong. And we would love to see what you've learned today. Snap a picture and tweet it to us at KCS Science.